In this tutorial, I'm going to cover basic render settings and get it set up so your scene is rendering out relatively fast and you can get it relatively noise free. The first thing, obviously, is you have to click here on render setup. And that brings up your render dialog, otherwise, you can press F10. That also brings it up. When I'm setting this up and I'm setting up my render settings here, I'm just going to set this back to default and then set this back here just so I'm doing everything as you can see. So normally I'm going to render out in 4K for a client. In this case, I'm just going to render out for the size for YouTube. This is the size of my screen, so this is what you're getting. Um, come over to here to V-Ray. I'll change this from progressive to bucket. I'm going to open up the frame buffer. I'm going to tell this where I want it to save the file. Changes to EXR, bedroom scene. Now the reason I save it as an EXR is because then I get all the different paths saved out, all the different items saved out in one item, in one one image. Otherwise, you've got all of those different. You've got to load, you know, the diffuse. You've got to load the render. You've got to load your your reflection, your glossiness. You've got to load all that detail in. This will save everything out. Now. This is your default max subdivs and noise threshold. Uh, if I want a really nice render, I'll raise it up to 100 and I'll drop this down to something like 0, 3. But that's going to take a lot longer to render. So I'm going to leave this at 24 and then I'm going to leave this at the default of 0 0.01 and then we're going to use the denoiser in order to get rid of noise on the image. Bucket width is 18. I'll normally drop this down somewhere around 18 or 24 depending on. For 4K, I'll probably put it at 24. If I've got lots of glass objects, I'll drop it down to 12 even, you know, if I've got a whole bar full of bottles because it'll just mean, yes, it's going to hang and take a while on these little points, but overall, it's going to be quicker at getting done. Color mapping. I'm going to leave this at Reinhardt. You can, you know, hover over here. It'll give you some information. I'm going to drop this down to 0.5 and I'm going to just clamp my output. It doesn't give you such a photorealistic, you know, it, it makes it so the camera doesn't behave exactly as a realistic camera, but it will clamp out highlights and blow in highlights and make it so, so, that, so I have a scene with a lot more, with more detail in it. So that's why I use this blend of exponential and linear multiply. Some guys I know just use exponential and just set that to one, back to one, and some people just use linear multiply. But Reinhardt blends them and I find I get a nice, you get a nice result of blending the two together. For GI, we're going to leave this on brute force. And like cash, I'm going to raise this up to 2000. But default will also work nice and work well. Settings, I really only use this for distributed rendering when I've got blaze, which I'm adding. And in this case, I'm not doing that. And that's it, the render elements. I'm not going to go through in this tutorial exactly why I've put all of these different render elements in here. I'm going to cover that in the next tutorial when I go into some post production and to give you some idea of what's happening here. And now we have it, you just click on render.